Our first big calculus concept, um, and what we're going to focus on primarily in chapter one, is the concept of limits. All right. In this particular section, we're going to look at finding limits graphically. So having a graphing calculator is often very helpful for doing that. And then also numerically, and having a calculator, some kind of calculator, but specifically a graphing calculator is really nice, is just about the only way that that makes sense. Okay, you're not going to be able to compute all this by hand. So we're going to start at the beginning here with what in the world is a limit. Very basically, a limit is simply a y value that you approach, but you may or may not touch. So what does that mean? Well, if you actually arrive at that value, it means it's actually on the function. Think about a graph itself. It means it's nice and smooth and you have every little value along the way. There's no holes, there's no gaps. But if there is simply a hole, you can still get infinitely close to the hole, right, on the graph. So you're getting very, very close to whatever that y value is at that hole, and that's what your limit would be. We're going to talk about three different kinds of limits. One is the limit that happens as you come from the right-hand side of the graph. So back in the last section when we were putting in values of 2.1, 2.01, 2.001, we were on the right-hand side, something slightly bigger in terms of x values than the value 2. Okay, The notation for that is listed there. It's got a little plus sign after the 3, right? We're approaching 3 from the right-hand side. The right-hand side is the positive side of your graph. When there's a little negative after the 3, it doesn't mean negative 3, right? That negative would come before the 3. The little negative after the 3 means from the left-hand side. That's what was happening on that question when we were putting in the 1.9 and the 1.99. Those numbers were slightly smaller than 2. So they're on the left-hand side graphically for the number 2. So if we want to be on the left-hand side, we put a little negative after the value we're looking at. In this case, my example says 3. And if you want to know what happens as you come from both directions, which was actually what we were looking at on that question, right? The two side, a little bit bigger, the two side, a little bit smaller. When you're coming at it from both directions, there's simply nothing that happens after the value 3. It's just 3. So when the 3 stands alone, it means you have to be able to do it from both sides. Often, it's a comparison, kind of like we did with our list. When we looked at our list, the comparison was, well, what happened from the right? What happened from the left? Now compare them. Oh, look, they both approached the same value. We were looking specifically on that question at slope values. Now we're looking at limits. So that part's a little bit different, but the notational idea is the same. In order for a limit to exist, what happens from the left-hand side and the right-hand side have to be the same. So the limit exists if and only if both corresponding one side limits exist and are equal. So on that problem that we did in the last section, if one of those numbers had approached 14, one of those lists had approached 14, and another list had approached 15, then we would say that the limit didn't exist because they were approaching different values. Okay? So they have to come at from both sides. You have to come at them from both sides and approach the same value. What that really means is the graph can't jump. It can't spin off to infinity or negative infinity, you know, plummet or, or go up forever kind of thing. That's what it really means. What it can do, however, is it can have a hole. Holes are okay for limits. That's not a problem. But it can't have a jump. So we're going to take a look at an example. When you have a picture, it looks mostly like this, I think. And we have some questions asked of us, A through E here, and it wants us to identify each limit and to decide, state, if it does or does not exist. Okay? So if it exists, we're going to write the value down. If it doesn't exist, we're going to write down does not exist, or you can do D and E. Okay? So on the first one, oh, on actually on the first three, they all say negative one. Do you guys see that? This part right here, this, not, you know, not before that, I mean, not after that, but that part all is matching on the first three, A through C. Okay, so it's negative one, and on my graph, that would be right here. 
yeah? So we're always talking about the x values. The x value is negative 1. So on the first one, on part A, what does this plus sign mean again? From the right. So this is the right-hand side of your graph, yes? Okay, right-hand side of your graph. So it doesn't mean you're going to the right. It means you're coming from the right. So if you can imagine walking on the curve from the right toward the value of x equal negative 1, that's what you're doing. You're walking along the curve toward the value of x equal negative 1, and as you're doing that, you're approaching a specific location. It's an open circle, right? But what's the y value at that spot? It's 2, yeah. So this limit is 2. All right, now we're going to do it on the second one, part B. This one has a negative, so it wants to come at it from the left side of the graph. So you start somewhere over to the left of negative 1, and you approach negative 1, walking along the curve. This time you're approaching that solid dot. Sometimes you approach the same place, sometimes you don't. If you're approaching that solid dot, and the question you're asking yourself is what y value is happening as I get really close to x equal negative 1. And we're at that one we get 1, yeah. Okay, so what happens next is we compare these, right? Over here it says the limit exists if the one-sided limits both exist, which ours do. One of them is a 2 and one of them is a 1. But the other thing is that it says that they have to be equal, the same, and what happens on ours? They're not. So what does that mean? Well, it means that the limit does not exist. There is no limit. There's a jump in the graph. Um, I gave this example last semester, and I thought it was a really good one. So my husband is actually, we're going to lunch today, right? He's going to come, he's going to take me to lunch today. Um, if he and I talked before we got here, and I said, I'm going to go to lunch at McDonald's, and we both agreed to go to lunch at McDonald's. So we're both like, man, we're going to the X equals McDonald's, right? But he ended up at the McDonald's on Harrison, and I ended up at the McDonald's on Kickapoo. It would be very difficult to have lunch together, yes? Right? We didn't arrive at the same place. There's a gap. Yeah, we were approaching the same, we were approaching McDonald's, but it was different locations where we ended up. That's what's happening on this graph. Now, on the second, the second numbers that are listed here on part D and E, they don't have signs after them, negatives or positives. So what does that mean? It means it has to come from both directions. So it's kind of like part D is three questions in one, right? I've got to come from the right, I've got to come from the left, I've got to compare it, and I've got to figure out if they're the same. Okay? Same thing for E. I've got to come from the right, I've got to come from the left, I've got to compare them and see if they're the same. Now, there is a jump in my graph, but if I'm not approaching the X value of that jump, it's no problem. I just jump and I keep going. So let me show you what I mean. On part D, it says we're approaching X equals to negative 2. Okay, so negative 2 is right here. And if I come from the right, if I want to start over here, it's totally fine. When I get to the jump, I just jump down and I keep going. It's no problem. I've still got to get to 2, negative 2. And then I have to come from the left, and so I come from the left, and I just cross right on until I get there. And on this one, I actually arrive at the, ooh, that was really big. I arrive at the same spot, don't I? Right? I say Qdoba. There's only one Qdoba. That's what I'm hoping for for lunch today. That's what I'm going to suggest. It'll probably work out. I'll let you know on Wednesday. <laughs> so we say Qdoba, and we're both going to arrive at the same place because there's no confusion, right? So this one, what's the y value that both directions arrive at? It's 1. So this two-sided limit does exist, and it's 1. How about E? Well, it's 0. Let me erase my screen. So x equals 0 is actually the same as the y-axis, right? Okay, so from the right-hand side, I'm going at it like this. And from the left-hand side, I can start over here, and I get to this point, and I, I jump up, no problem. And on this one, I arrive right here. It's not a clearly discernible, super easy to see, so we're going to approximate what we think it looks like. What do you think it is? 1.75. Is that what I heard? 2.75, sorry. There we go. Sure, why not? And if it bothers you to say that it's equal, just put an approximation sign. I'm fine with that, too. Whatever it is, it's the same spot, right? 
from the left and from the right, they match, we're good to go. It's no problem, it's the same space. So the limit exists on that one as well. All right, this is a great place for us to stop because what happens next is we're looking at tables. So if you did not bring your calculator today, please, please, please bring your calculator tomorrow, if at all possible, TI 83 or 84, so that we can get all your tables set up and everything's ready to go and you're good for the rest of the semester, all right?